so um academy award winner suicide, suicide squad. squad yeah for 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 putting makeup on margot robbie and then smudging it as far as i can tell like damaged oh hi here we go no no all right bye academy like, i just like the makeup wasn't bad harley quinn's makeup was cool pretty much everything about the joker was stupid let's be honest but like I don't think it was Oscar worthy makeup. Like I probably could have done the makeup they did on Margot Robbie. Academy Award winner Suicide Squad. Yep. And did you catch the M Night Shyamalan ending to the Oscars? Yeah. Or he just straight up awarded the wrong movie? Can we do that with the election? Awkward. Yeah, that was pretty much everybody on Twitter for about two hours afterward. Can, can, we, can we check the envelope? And since you bring it up, and... Donald Trump gave an interview to Breitbart today where he said the reason that they got the envelopes mixed up and awarded the wrong movie was because they were all so focused on trying to make fun of him that the whole ceremony just fell apart, that they were so laser focused on trying to make fun of donald trump that they didn't do their jobs also little known fact donald trump is responsible for the sun rising and setting each day yeah thank him praise him no trump makes the rains come trump makes the sun shine oh all right mike makes a good point killer croc was makeup in suicide squad mm -hmm. that was that was pretty impressive yeah so. but did you see star trek beyond makeup yeah, that's the thing, though. Like, that was way more impressive special effects makeup because they did several different types of aliens. And, you know, uh, that, was, that was better. Academy Award winner. What have we become? And you know that's going to be on the DVD cover. Like, exactly. for the rest of our lives, we have to hear... Academy Award winner, Suicide Squad. Did it win Best Picture? No, it won Best Makeup. What have I Academy become? Academy Award winner, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. My dearest friend, everyone I know goes away in the end. And Denzel got robbed. Yeah. I mean, I... Everybody was on the everybody was on Twitter going rob robbed robbed and I'm like look folks if y'all want to report a robbery you can call 911. I am also still very upset that Amy Adams didn't even get nominated for Arrival because I don't know if you saw that movie but that movie was goddamn amazing. I have not seen it. Yet. And she was really good and the fact that she didn't even get a nomination I just I just don't even understand that. Well, we have our own horror show too. We oh, do. Oh boy, I cannot wait to get to this first. Oh boy, we're wow. We're gonna teach y'all kids some stuff tonight. You're gonna uh -oh. learn some things. Uh oh, am I gonna give sex ed again? Each week, Catherine, radio dead air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. Little something we like to call. Crazy. And our first story tonight. Crazy for feeling so you know, I, I'm still iffy on the whole phrase mansplaining. And I understand why a lot of people are too. However, there are iffy. moments. Iffy in what way? Iffy in the way that it's sort of like become a blanket term. Now, it does have its point, and we're going to get to to where, yeah, this is obviously one of those instances. It doesn't cover quite so much as it's shown to encompass, but this story, there's no other word. There's, there's no other fucking word. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what a chiropractor is? Oh, God, we're doing this. <laughs> we're doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what a chiropractor is? 
Tara, what's a chiropractor? Someone who fucks around with people's backs without a medical license. A chiropractor is not, I want to stress this, a chiropractor is not a medical doctor. They're certainly not a goddamn gynecologist. They are not a gynecologist. And yet, there is one chiropractor's quest to improve. I don't know if y'all know this, but the spine does not extend down into the uterus. It doesn't. The when only time you have a spine in your uterus is when you're growing a person in it. One chiropractor's quest to improve the productivity of women the world over with vagina glue. Yeah, because he said that women are, we spend 25% of our time so distracted by our menses that we can't even think. Vagina sealing glue stick, a terrifying alternative to traditional sanitary products. A male inventor in the U.S. has horrified the internet with his new product, the Menses Adhesive Vaginal Lipstick. Created by one Dr. Daniel Dobbs of Wichita, Kansas, the invention was granted a U.S. patent on January 10th. It's described on his LinkedIn page as, quote, a natural compound of amino acids and oil in a lipstick that is applied to the labia minora, which causes them to cling together in a manner strong enough to retain menstrual fluid in the vestibule above the labia minora for the vaginal opening and urethra exit. <clears throat> in other words, there's a way for your knee with, for tampons or sanitary towels by literally gluing your vagina shut. No. I'm sorry, no. Hell no. There's a few things. This, before we even get into what a monstrous, festering cock sore this guy is. Okay, yeah, sure. For those of you that are not possessed of a vagina, a few things about this product. One, I'm not gluing my vagina shut. Probably for the same reason that if somebody told you to glue your balls together, you would say no. A lot of nerve endings down there. What happens when you remove an adhesive? Pain. Oh, no, wait, did you... No, this, this no, is it easily you... is easily removed with urine, which is great, except for women don't pee out of our vagina. I can... <laughs> Every week I am surprised anew at how many people don't know this. There's three holes down there. There's the one you poop from the one that makes babies, and the one you pee from. They're separate. You don't pee from your vagina. You're not peeing over your fetus the whole time you're pregnant. Do, do you, you know what is sad is, is most, I, I can honestly say a lot of men don't know this and even some women mm -hmm. don't know that. We are failing our children so, in this country. So the fact that urine breaks down your weird vagina glue means Fuck all. But but did you read what he said? Have you ever Unless woke you're gonna pee on your hand and rub it on there, which by the way is not sanitary. Have you ever woke up with your lips stuck together? It didn't hurt and it was kind of fun. That's a quote. That's an actual all you had to do was wet your lips from the inside of saliva and they became unstuck. I Okay. Use this stuff on your balls. <laughs> And then maybe I'll listen to you. Now it, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. Now, all right, let's let's pause because had this just been a well-intentioned but not very competent person, that would be bad enough. That would be bad enough. But he went for the fucking gold. Oh, did um doing nothing to destroy the gathering online hate mob, Dr. Dobbs replied to one commenter, quote, you as a woman should have come up with a better solution than diapers and plugs. Which, but, by the way, there is. There is the menstrual cup. Yeah. But you didn't. Reason being, women are focused on and distracted by your period 25% of the time, making them far less productive than they could be. Which is hilarious, because as far as I can tell, y'all are obsessed with your dicks about 85% of the time. 
I am, but I'm just, I, 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 I sit on it. Sometimes it hurts. I'm just saying. Gentlemen, I'm just saying, if you could, if you could stop spending all your time thinking about your dick, maybe you could be an actually productive member of society. It gets, he's, it's better. It gets better. He later told Forbes he believed he identified the root cause of the negative responses his product had received. Quote, a lot of the LGBT community, lesbians in particular, are furious at me because I'm a white straight man. That way must to, be it. Way to live the stereotype, asshole. I just, I just, Listen, I just, the, only, the only reason that any woman this man knows would be gluing her vagina shut is to make abso-fucking-lutely sure no part of him ever gets in there. Now you found... They could call this the Trump stick. They could call it the Trump stick. Now we found a need... We, a, a, we, could, we could find an application for it as yet another way to prevent rape that doesn't involve <clears throat> making men not rape sure that's crazy talk i know what is what and why is it called a lipstick <laughs> it's clearly not a fucking i mean yes technically those are lips i guess oh. does he just think women have like certain like only certain terms we understand and if he didn't make it sound like a makeup we'd be like what i hate him he's yeah it's just blow your balls together and then we'll talk i also want to pull blow, blow your balls together and then try to remove it with your own urine i also want to repeat one more time this guy is not a gynecologist he is a chiropractor who does not appear to have a good gr I mean, where is he pulling that 25% of the time number? Right out of his big old ass. And, and okay, let's just say, yeah, there are good reasons women are preoccupied during their periods. It hurts! It's painful. You're literally squelching like a quart of blood out of your vagina. You have to worry about whether or not Whatever apparatus you choose to use is filled and leaking. And gluing your vagina shut will not make your your uterus stop going in well. Cultures, cleaning days. Like in some cultures, you're literally shunned for the whole time and you're not allowed to go to school. It's a little distracting. But you know what? We still fucking manage it. So where did, did he, did, where is his numbers? 25% of just the whole. Right at his ass. Maybe, could, could he glue his ass shut? Could he glue his mouth shut? Same difference. Same difference. And his nose? I'm also not a doctor, so I'm not sure, but. Oh, this is, oh God, oh boy. Wow, we got another one. To, oh. Am I just going to be angry all night? Is that what we're going to do? Well, this is from Northern Ireland. Oh, okay. And one of the Hi. nice... One Hi, of the, Amanda and Omega. One, one of the nice things about uh, the UK and the whole area... You know what I just really love about that, that whole area? Mail slots. It's quaint. It's charming. That whole, instead of having a mailbox, there's a little slot in your door, and just about everybody has one. They put, put the letters through it, and it's... People it's, in America still have those. Yeah, but it's... I mean, it's, it's not the norm, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's the... In England, that's the norm. Because yeah. Al-Qaeda could get through there. <laughs> you know, after this, you'll wish Al-Qaeda had gotten through there. That would have been a preferable alternative. Because this son of a bitch took something I thought, oh, that's lovely and charming and it's very old world and I adore that. And he did that. Northern Ireland postman who pleasured himself through letterbox caught on closed circuit TV making unwanted delivery. <laughs> who wrote that? Sarah Henderson. Congratulations. That is a wonderful line. 
David Camblin, 52, uh, pled guilty last week to three counts of damaging a door. Uh, last August, a man who was work having worked on his late mother's house at uh, Derry's Road in Monea. Is that how I say it? Uh, Monea I would say or Monea? Yeah, Monea or Monea. Monea. Uh, became suspicious after observing a, quote, puddle on the floor just inside the front door of the house. He installed a closed-circuit television to identify the culprit, uh, culprit, and footage showed a parcel force van pulling up outside the house one lunchtime. The man walked to the door, placed his private parts in the letterbox of the front door. On the recording, he then appeared to masturbate through the letterbox. Why? Why? Man, I hope they didn't have hardwood floors because, <laughs> well, no, I, I what, one of my high school boyfriends told oh, me from experience that semen will eat the paint off a car. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know personally if that's true. He swore to me that it was, and he knew because he did it to somebody. <laughs> Great. Terry, you realize what people are going to I have largely terrible taste in men, is the moral of the story. I'm lucky I married a very lovely man. <laughs> so I'm hoping this house didn't have hardwood floors, because that finish is gone. You realize the people watching right now, someone, someone, one person of the thousands who watch each week, one person is going to go, really? I got to try that. And 16 people are going to be in the YouTube comments explaining why I'm wrong. Oh. <laughs> I, I just and think... somebody is gonna really go for it and be like, "How dare you!" When you yelled about men saying things about parts they don't have, and then you claim things about semen when you don't have a dick. I don't, I don't. I'm telling you what a dude told me. I don't care. I just it. Don't fuck a male slot. <laughs> well, I don't need a dick to know that. Why would you do this? Like what? It's about like. Did Why you, is that your thing? Do you just walk up to the mail slide and start hearing womp, 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 womp? I've been really trying, baby. Like, is it a really, really sexy door? <laughs> it is, it, I just couldn't help myself. It's the most beautiful door I've ever seen in my life. Like, like, why? Special delivery! No, no, no. no. It's not, nobody ordered that. You, you can't, why? You have a hand. And he you know used what? his hand. He wasn't fucking the mail slot, it says. He used his hand. He just used the mail slot as the receptacle, to which I say, tissues. Well, not toilets. Only that, not only that. You, People. If you're, in the, willing. if you're in the UK, chances are you yourself have a mail slot on your very own front door. That's true. You could fuck your own door. Fuck your own door, people. But little I guess common not, courtesy. I guess that's not as exciting. Oh, it's a mail slot. Oh no! Only about thirty-two people have made that joke in the in the chat. Gentlemen, fuck your own door. I know other doors look more exciting. Some of them might be more curvaceous. <laughs> like, I know your own door, you can get in a rut when you're in a monogamous relationship with your own door. I get that. But, you know, you just got to work through it. Or if you really can't, then get rid of that door and get a newer, prettier door. If, if you just can't. Uh, well, we, we have just got an asshole palooza this week. Um, next one comes from Cam Tucky. Uh, oh boy. Blue Lives Matter. Love these guys. Really love them. Great people. Wonderful human beings. Um, <clears throat> so, have, you've seen the Punisher, or at least the Punisher logo, right? 
Yes. And I actually have seen the Thomas Jane movie. Yeah, it's it's a skull. It's a yes. skull. It's like a weird, like, very stylized skull. Kentucky police stop using Punisher logo after realizing what it means. He murders people. Punisher is a fictional Marvel character who fights crime with a vengeance, but unlike most arbiters of justice in the real world, he's totally cool with murder, torture, and other violent and criminal means to get like, the job done. Pretty much all he does is murder people. Kentucky police chief announced Friday that he removed the Punisher skull logo feature alongside the phrase Blue Lives Matter from his department vehicles after putting two and two together. This was the, the police, these were the police cars driving around in uh, Cattleburg, Eastern Kentucky. Also, the character is called the Punisher. And I know, I know you're the police. And so, yes, you yeah. are going to wind up punishing some people. But good PR suggests that that shouldn't be the primary image you're going for. That's why they came up with the whole protect and serve thing. You've seen that old Mitchell and Webb look a bit about the Nazis, right? Have you? I don't think so. So there are two Nazis sitting at the front line, and one of them looks at at, at his friend and go, "Why do we have skulls on our on our on our uniforms?" And, and the other one goes, "I don't know." And the first one goes back and says, "Are we the baddies? <laughs> are, are, are we the bad guys?" <laughs> Why skulls? And that's the thing, like, if you went into police work with your goal being punishing people, you might have the wrong psyche to be a cop. Yeah. Like, that's not, yes, it is part of the job, but it's not really supposed to be the part of the job you really enjoy. Also, aside from the implications of all this, guess what you've just done? It's called... Punishment? It trademark infringement because the Punisher logo is trademark lo yeah. registered trademark of Marvel who are owned by Disney Disney and there is nothing yeah. they have all the lawyers there is nothing Disney likes to do better than to sue people who they they love suing. That is one oh. fucking litigious mouse. Oh yes. If you yeah. if you violate their trademarks. <laughs> so like, um who, who pitched this idea? Um How did this happen? Idiots. Hey, did you see that Punisher show on Netflix? No man, but the trailer looked really awesome. Hey, you know what we should do? We should put that on the car. I mean, I guess yes. He is a former cop, FBI agent in the in the movie. I don't know if it's the same in the comics, but it's it's different. It changes. On Daredevil, I think he was just a cop. No, he was a soldier. Okay, yes, right. But that doesn't like. I mean, Robert Patrick was wearing a cop uniform in Terminator Two. It doesn't make him a hero, like. And the Blue Lives Matter thing, like, bums me out because what makes me sad is that the statements Blue Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter should not be mutually exclusive and should not be in conflict with each other. And also... But, but they are. And that Should sucks. not involve skulls. No. And, you know, subliminal threats to the public. Next up, um, has this ever happened to you? You've just bought cocaine. But where do you keep it? Where's a safe spot for your preferred drug of choice? Up your nose? Why, your local ATM! What the fuck happened here? Wait, is there an ATM that dispenses coke? No, there's someone who deposited... Coke in a bank ATM. Investigators is seeking to identify the Florida bank customer who included a bag of cocaine along with cash deposited at an ATM machine. How? Probably an envelope. 
You're gonna have to like it couldn't have been much. Is it back? Those slugs are pretty fucking flat. Couldn't have been a lot. According to the police report, technician was directed to examine an ATM that had gone out of service. The ATM's deposit mechanism was jammed. Upon studying the ATM, the technician discovered what caused the jam. A small, clear baggie containing a white, powdery substance. Yeah, that's not going to work in a <laughs> slot made for bills. Cops reported the technician concluded that the substance was possibly with the cash. The last person who made the deposit causing the malfunction. Please obtain it. Also, do you think the bank's going to keep that for you? Because they're not. No, you can't. It's not like money. You don't put the cocaine in the bank and come back and get a small, uh, you know, cocaine interest. Yeah. No. You, you can't withdraw it. You don't get more cocaine. No. It's it's not like it doesn't grow like the money does. Um <clears throat> I just it but mother you would think if you have cocaine, you'd be keeping close track of your cocaine. You'd like to think, but didn't we do the guy with the suitcase full of drugs that just left it? Yeah. Some, like just forgot it? Whoops. My bad. People are not, I mean, it's almost like drug addicts aren't the clearest thinkers. I'm just, don't do it's drugs. It's almost like you can't trust coke heads to make responsible decisions. Don't do drugs, kids. This this is, here you go. Don't do, don't do drugs or you'll be shoving cocaine in an ATM. Yeah. Why would you do They still don't know. And also, listen, a lot of you aren't around in the 80s, but Nash and I were, so we can tell you, bankers fucking love cocaine. They're not going to give it back. <laughs> you drop your cocaine off at the bank, you're going to come back, you're going to have no cocaine, because they're going to have done it all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the 80s. Do you want to know why everything was all those weird pastel colors? Cocaine. Cocaine. That's why. That, that, that's all and, there. And Zima. The shit was everywhere. Uh, oh, we have some classic Florida fun. By which I mean not fun at all and, and just a disaster. By which in sunshine and beaches? No. By oh. which? I mean, naked crazy. Oh. Melbourne, Florida, man strips in traffic, yells, quote, I am God, wrestles with cops. Why do they always think they're God? Melbourne man who authority said hopped out of his car on a busy causeway and stripped naked in the rain before wrestling with several police officers in front of onlookers, remains under mental evaluation. Incident report at 3 p.m. Wednesday as heavy rains and winds ripped through the area. Melbourne Police Lieutenant Stephen Sadoff said the unidentified man was traveling along the uh, Ugale, Ugale? I, I don't know. Oh. I have a I have a beach ball. The page isn't loading. Uh, uh, he pulled over and took off all of his clothes on top of the causeway. Then he started running around yelling, quote, I am God. This is one of those moments where you have to ask yourself. If you were God, would you be naked in the rain on a highway screaming that you were God? To be fair, biblically speaking, seeing the face of God is enough to strike a human blind. God has to appoint an angel to speak for him because the voice of God would basically drive you insane and kill you. So if you were literally possessed by God, yeah, you probably would lose your crackers. That said, you probably also wouldn't be able to be wrestled to the ground by the cops. Which, that's not fun. That's not a fun day on the job. Why does everybody always think they're God? Like, why doesn't anybody ever think... <laughs> Bear the Archangel Michael or Zeus. I would respect or Dionysus. Why don't the fucking drunks think they're Dionysus? Because that would make sense. I would respect the fuck out of the first person we get on this show who runs around naked screaming, I'm Kurt Vonnegut. I would respect you. I'd be like, motherfucker's original at least. Yeah. Like, <laughs> God, yeah, you know. Expand your pantheon. 
get drunk and naked and think you're Buddha. Buddha might be naked in public. It's it's not a fun day when you're you're a law enforcement officer and you have to wrestle a naked person. It's not a uh, fun time. A wet naked person because it's raining. Yeah, that that's that's one of those moments where it's like it it you know sound wet naked person sounds sexy. Not really. Not in real life. Never. It's never, never quite. That's that. It's not. It's not like a penthouse letter. It's it's more like. It's not like Dear Penthouse, it's more like Dear Therapist. I can't believe this happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different kind of letter, is what I'm trying to say. Oh. Why, why, why? That's also, whatever drugs you're on, those are not good drugs. Those are not good drugs. No. Last you're, ones. You're not God. Sorry. You're not God. Last one's from Missouri. <sighs> oh, my, my husband's home. Oh, good. This is definitely a story he'll like then. He's gone to bed, but I can tell him about it. He's a Missourian. Man trying to burn out moles sets neighbor's house on fire. Oh, a grass fire turned into a house fire in a Riverview neighborhood Monday afternoon. Around 1 p.m., uh, Michael Mitchell and Darian uh, Finley were driving down the street when they saw a man waiting for help. What he had hoped he... Oh, oh stop, stop, stop. stop. Auto play. Er, what he had hoped was a contained grass fire started to spread. Mitchell and Finley said they started grabbing buckets of water to dump on the fire. Said within minutes, the fire had spread to the front and backyard of a neighboring house caught on fire. Then they ran the front door of the home and alerted the resident that his home had caught fire. Fire initially started when he was trying to burn moles out of the yard. First of all, that's cruel. Hmm. There have got to be better ways to deal with the mole problem than just burning them to death. Second, you know what's really flammable? Grass. Leaves twigs houses i i just like you don't set your fucking lawn on fire that's not gonna i mean maybe you'll get rid of the moles but you'll also get rid of your home on the plus side next year it will grow in so green so green here's here's just a, a reference have you ever do you, you ever seen an exterminator at work like orkin or or any of those pest control services no. My sister did have the whole house sprayed when I was in the hospital with my with my spider bite, but I wasn't home for it. Do you see any of them getting out of their truck with a fucking <laughs> flamethrower? They don't put that in the commercials, no. No! That's not how it's done! No. Mole problem. Did he try whacking them first? Also, what kind of asshole are you to just set little animals on fire? Yeah, that's that's. I can that's understand. Fucked up. Like, what kind of future serial killer are you? I I can. I can understand the frustration, and yeah, well, when you exterminate moles, they are gonna die, just not on fire. They're gonna be poisoned. That's how you normally take care of it. Yeah. But. We had a squirrel problem when I was a kid. My dad set up traps. He drove them to the state park and let them go. He never drove them far enough, so they'd come back, and he didn't believe me that he had to take them 10 miles, so we, we had the same squirrel problem over and over. <laughs> but we didn't fucking murder them with fire. <sighs> we enticed them into a cage with a peanut butter cracker and drove them to the state park. I... Caddyshack is not a how-to for pest control. I'm going to surprise no one and tell you that I haven't seen, seen that Caddyshack. movie, but I know it involves a little furry animal puppet. Yeah. Is it a gopher? It's a gopher. It's okay. It's all right. I just... It... <laughs> the 
fire. How many stories have we done over the years of people burning their fucking house down trying to kill some small animal with fire? Many. Like a spider. I don't fuck around with spiders anymore. They tried to take my fucking leg. <laughs> you know what I don't do when I see a spider? I don't try to set it on fire. What I do when I see a spider is I either get a shoe or my husband. Fire is one of man's oldest tools, but it's like, it's not the only tool anymore. <laughs> We have many other tools. We've come up with new shit since we banged the rocks together. Mm -hmm. we, and you know what? You could just bang the rocks on the thing. Maybe not on the mole. <laughs> but, I mean, it might be hard to bash a little mole's head. But... <laughs> no one was hurt, thankfully, but guess what? You paying for that, motherfucker? Hell yeah, you are. There, there's no getting out. There's no getting away from that. There's no you saying, "Oh no, I wasn't me." You set shit on fire and the house burned. You paying for that? I look forward to the farmer's insurance commercial that will come of this. We are fuck this. <laughs> ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. <sighs> like I, I have a fucking omerta against spiders <laughs> i'm not setting my house on fire for those of you who are just for some reason wandered into the show for the first time ever those motherfuckers tried to take my leg a spider bit tara and how big was the hole about the size of a ping pong ball about the size I, I got bit by a brown recluse and i wound up in the hospital for four days and they carved a fucking ping pong ball out of my leg and I had to pack it with fucking gauze for like two months. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting and horrible. And I don't fuck with spiders. Spider. So, yeah, it's, she's got good. I don't blame you. You know, if somebody if, compiled all of us talking about it on YouTube, I think there's a whole like, and, yeah, but I forget. I always forget his name and I feel so bad. There's a guy that does anthologies of all of all of us talking about a certain topic. Like there's one of all the cut clips of Bridget and stuff, and they put together a whole episode just of me talking about my leg hole. So you could probably find that if you're really interested. I always forget his name and I feel really bad because I'm sure that's a lot of hard work. But uh, yeah, you didn't know there's a guy that does that? Oh. He cuts together like he'll do like all Nash and Terror talking about naked crazy. And there is, there's one that's all Bridget, you know, and whatever. And there's one that's all the times we talked about my leg hole. <laughs> the leg hole. Oh. So, yeah, that, the first thing we, what do we learn this week? We've learned we have other tools than fire. We've been, yes. we've been tooling around about 20,000 years as a human society. We have other options. Um, we've learned that, uh, you know, if you feel the need to proclaim yourself a deity, do something original. Yahweh's been done. It's been done. Go go for something. Go maybe. Seth Campbell is the YouTuber's name. I'm sorry to interrupt, but people are telling me it's Seth Campbell. He works hard. So original. We've learned that if you put your Coke in, a, in an ATM... <laughs> You're not going to get it back. The bankers are going to snort it. And the the, yeah, that's that's a deposit you're not going to see any return on. Um, we've learned skulls are not what the good guys wear. Just just in case you needed reminder. Or good guys wear their skulls on the inside. That's all. Keep your skull on the inside. We learned if you must fuck a door, fuck your own door. And finally, we've learned chiropractors should not have be doing anything about the vagina. That's yeah. not a, you're not good at. Don't fucking talk down to us about our bleeding uteri. Yeah. Just don't. Don't. Not because, and not, I mean, all the PMS jokes that are going to happen aside. Because it's fucking rude and stupid and shut the fuck up. And Unless you want me to talk down to you about your prostate problems. Oh shit, I'm going to have those eventually, aren't I? 
or your erectile dysfunction. I got a birthday card from a radiologist offering me a coupon for a discounted spa service if I saw them for a mammogram. <laughs> I was like, that's a great birthday card. Like, happy birthday. Your face is falling and your tits could rot off any second. Thank you. I, I know I'm 40 now. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest with you people. I don't even know what my prostate is. I'm just, just putting that right out there. It's the thing that's going to cause doctors to put their finger up your butt from now on. Until it starts to swell and make you not able to pee. Good to know. That's one to grow. No, guys, <laughs> yes, no. I know what a prostate is. <laughs> I know what a fucking prostate is. It's like a semicolon. 